Hey guys, so welcome back to my another video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about the uh, query params in uh, Angular router. If you guys watch my previous video for the uh, params, then uh, I have created this same project. But in this video, I'm only adding the couple of more things just to show that how the query params work okay so if you didn't watch my previous video for a params one then i'm gonna go a little little recap on this video so basically this is my the the list of the project and i'm i have an api here so in this api basically it shows the all the project here if i go for project this uh, endpoint here but if I try to go for one, then it will give me the specific project that it belongs to. So basically, it does the filter by the ID when you go to the different route slash the ID number for the project. Okay, so it's the exact same here. So now it's uh, low. If I refresh this page, then it's gonna add this the the num the list of the project here. And if I click it here, then it's gonna show me the 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 details about this project. Okay, so I'm going to show you the code here. So now I will go make this a little bigger. Okay. So what I'm going to make. This, so what really happens is basically uh, I'm going to show you the first thing is a router. So in this router, the if it's empty, then it goes to the project component. But if it has some empty slash project then it goes to project component as well but if you want to go to the project slash id then it goes to something called project detail component here and if you have if you go to the different route that does not even exist in the router then it goes back to the uh the project here okay so this is my the uh, router setup for this project here so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the project slash one, which I, I think I already did it here, project slash one. So it goes show me the details information about this, this specific project. So it will go to the a project detail component. So now let's see the project detail component here. So if I go for project detail component here, so the first thing what it really does is, uh, okay, it, I created the reactive form. So this is the reactive form. And this reactive form has a data of the specific uh, uh, the ID that you are in. Okay, so this is the the template for the uh, form uh, the the reactive uh, uh, form. If you guys uh, didn't know about reactive form, then I have also created a video. I'm gonna put that uh, the link below it so you guys can watch it. So basically, this is the uh, the form builder, and here is the the specific form. So we have how many field here? One, two, five field here. So this is the five field which which I define it. Okay. So the this is just for the setup setting up the form, and the and the and the disable is true. So whenever it's loaded the first time, so it's disabled. It's this is disabled. I can't able to edit it. So I just make this as disabled is true. Okay, and the validator is required. It doesn't even matter for this uh, demo. Okay, so when it's loaded at first time, then it's using the params from activate route, which I discussed before in another video, and uh, on that one, I'm getting the project ID. And in this project ID, basically it's calling the service, which I have the two service here. The first is the list of the project and second is a project by the ID. So whenever this guy, this uh, project detail will load, then it will get the ID from params and it will get the more information from the service. Okay. So, so once it's getting the more information of service, basically here, what is really doing it is when you get the data from the service, then you are putting that data in a, in a reactive form here in a in a project form so this line of code is loop the the data what of the keys and if you found the keys in in a, in a project dot control which is basically the reactive form then set the the value on the reactive form so that's why i'm setting the value here and this value is coming from the api I, i'm directly setting on the reactive form here okay it it could be easy if i use a template a driven form 
but but I I started with the reactive form, so 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 I didn't I didn't change it to the tabla driven. And also after setting up this value, I just make this the, the project form to disable it. So now the, everything is disabled. It okay. So now what we're gonna do is when we click this button, then we're gonna make this enable. Okay, looks like this is enabled already, which is good. But we want to make this enable, and we also want to put here the edit mode to true. Okay, if it is mode to true, then make this as enable. That's what we want to do, and we're going to use a query param for that. So now let's go for the edit button. And basically, what the edit button does right now is whenever it's, it's going to call this edit uh, mode toggle uh, function. So basically, when this uh, function will call then it will make the project form which is my reactive form uh, enable and it also make the edit mode true okay it also made it because I made the edit mode true just to enable my button here on the bottom the save button which will show up here so if I click it here it will show up here and of course this all is enabled because that function has been called but we want to make something like if edit mode is true by the router then we want to make this as editable as well so for that we're going to use a query params so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, delete it delete this first and now it doesn't do anything so now let me add here the router link and i want to make this as dynamic so before I add a router link, I need to find out the ID of the project what we're looking into it. So if I go in this here, so basically I just got the data here and I'm just setting up on a form, a reactive form here. If we reactive form keys, which is project console that GitHub, this everything has been found, is included, then I'm just setting up the value. But I don't have a key here, what project we are in. So for that one, let me first thing is let me get this the project i can only able to get the idea as well but i can i can grab the whole project if i want so i'll just grab whole project so oh not this one so what i'm gonna do is when we get this data and we're gonna put the data in a project so in this project here now we will get the which project we selected I can show you here the project slash uh, JSON, uh, not slash, sorry, the pipe slash JSON. Then now, yes, here is a, here is the uh, the object that we are in, and and now we will also get the ID here, which is project that ID, right? We get the ID. So what we're gonna do here is on we're gonna create a router link on the router link here, okay? So I'm just going to delete this. It's a router link. So we're going to tell to go to the project. OK, go to the project and the ID, which is currently we are in project.id. So if I save it, so what it really does now is it will it will trigger. Uh, it will drill back to the same one where what we are in. Okay, now it says ID is undefined because it, it doesn't know that ID is defined when it's initializing at first time. So I'll just use as a question mark there. So it will disappear. So whenever I click this button, oh, it goes back to the project, but we don't want to go back to the project. I think we want to, I need a slash here. So let me put that slash there. So now if I click it here, go to detail. If I click it, yep, it's remain right there. Nothing will happen. So the next here is we could add the query params here. Okay. In the query params, we could able to add the object and we can tell that edit mode is make this as true whenever the user click this button. Okay. So now if I click this button, so now edit mode is true but this is not editable now so we just need to make this all the fill editable it's, so it's pretty straightforward so now we need to listen whenever it goes to the edit mode is true then we need to listen it 
and to listen it we're gonna do here this dot this is on the project detail on ng on init so basically it's setting up the this set up the uh, reactive form and getting the id and we could set it up here as well so after you get the id right get the the params as well query param and in a query param is a subscripts observable so we can subscribe and after you get the id that i just want to see the query params here okay so if i print it here so let's see how it come out so if i go here so now it's printing the object and edit mode is true so basically it's printing this so if i put anything here it's just going to print this we could able to get this edit mode so if d dot edit edit mode is equal to true then basically we just need to call this enable it enable basically it's not toggle it's it it's just edit mode enable so i'll just use edit mode enable okay so i'll just remove this so now whenever we click the button it goes to different route with the edit mode true and it will make the enable uh the our form so now if i click it here so now everything is enable and we we can see the button as well and of course the route chains as well so now you when you load it first time, it, we couldn't able to edit, but if I click it, then the, our query patterns will trigger it and it will make this as editable. And of course, when, it's, when I do a refresh, then it makes as editable. But if I change something here is false, then it's not editable again. So if I put anything, nothing will happen. It will not make a editable, oops. But if we make this as edit mode is true, then it does make editable so that's all for this video guys i'm gonna put this the the code in a github and please do subscribe and like my videos if you guys learn something new and thank you very much for watching guys bye for now